This is the Value Investor Podcast with Tracy Reinick. All things value, all the time. Welcome back, value investors. So most of you know now we've had the sharp pullback in the growth stocks, but some value stocks have also continued to slide in the last few weeks here in the autumn of 2018. So I thought I'd take a look to see what's really going on with the value stocks because everybody's talking about how oversold the growth stocks are, and some of them are. And I wanted to check in to see how oversold the value stocks are. They were already weak going into this recent sell-off, and now some of them have gotten even weaker, and some of it's not really justified. Let's just put it that way. That's what I mean by oversold, is that fundamentals aren't really matching up with everybody panicking and getting out of whatever stock it is. So value stocks can be oversold the same way growth stocks can be, and I wanted to try to find those stocks today. And how do you do that? How do you screen for oversold stocks? Well, I used um, a couple different metrics, obviously, to find the value stocks that are oversold. The first thing I did, though, because I wanted to also get high rank Zach stocks. So that was the first criteria I put in. I put in Zach's ranks, ones and twos into the screen. And um, that obviously is going to give me the buys and the strong buys, the number ones and number twos. And that should be rising earnings estimates. So that's what I want. I want to see rising earnings estimates so I can try to avoid some of those value trap issues that we've seen on other podcasts. Then I added the metric of how to find the oversold part of it. And for that, I used the criteria on the Zach screener that's the price as a percentage of 52-week high-low range. And for that, I plugged in less than 15 because I wanted it near the low range. So um, this kind of a metric would give me the lower the percentage, the better on the screen when it gave me the, the stocks. And that would be closer to the 52-week low. So if it comes up with zero under this criteria, then that means it's basically at the 52-week low. So um, I put that in not knowing for sure what I would get. That's why I just kind of went with 15 because I figured that would be close to those 52-week lows if I put that in. And then I would see what came up in the screen. And then... Um, I wanted to look for value too, because just because a stock's at a 52-week low doesn't mean it's a value. That's one of the bigger myths out there about value investing. People think value means, oh, it's sold off. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's what that is, because obviously there's a lot of growth stocks that are down 50%, like some of the Chinese stocks that I wouldn't exactly call value at this moment. So it just having, you know, being near the low doesn't make it a value. For a true value, we need to look at those value fundamentals. And for this screen, I chose to use the price to sales ratio just because uh, I like it. It's a little broader than the PE and I thought it would give us a few more stocks and not limit us so much. So I went with the price to sales ratio. It has to be less than one. And remember that means as a value investor, we're paying less than a dollar for that same dollar of sales. So if it's a price to sales ratio of 0.4, we're paying, you know, 40 cents for every dollar of sales. And that's pretty good. That that means we're getting the sales on, on sale, basically. So putting in those three criteria, that's it. I only use three here. I didn't add market cap, trading volume, none of that. So I will get some very small cap stocks probably with the screen. But just using those three criteria, I got 57 results. I didn't think that was that bad. That I thought maybe I might get 200 or so, but I, I got only 57. And I went through, of course, to pick out five stocks that I thought were interesting that do look oversold. And on this screen, because I have that oversold criteria in there, I did mainly focus on the names that were closer to zero. A couple of them were zero. And then I, w I looked at the ones, ones to 4% range off of that zero level. So that is, you know, within 4% of that 52-week low. And I thought that'd be pretty 
pretty big sell-off with most, most of these stocks if you're hitting a 52-week low right now or you're close to it. So let's jump right into what these stocks are because this did return some really interesting names. Like I feel like this is the best screen I've done in a while because we're getting both the oversold factor plus the cheapness plus the Zach's rank and that really the Zach's rank really drove some really good quality names on this week's podcast. I have to say, um, I was excited when I was researching all these. Okay, so let's get right into it. So the first stock is American Woodmark, and it's A M W D is the ticker. They make cabinets, and for whatever reason, because I've I've looked at this company in the past, but I haven't recently. The shares are down forty eight percent year to date even though everybody's remodeling their homes and the consumer is still strong and the job market is good. So <laughs> none of that made any sense, but down 48% year to date. It is hitting new lows as we're making this podcast. This is one of the ones that is hitting it. And this is only a small cap company with 1.2 billion market caps. So this is a pretty big downturn, pretty big overselling. So the price to sales ratio on this one is 0.85. So obviously under the one. And I took a look at the PE and pegs on these too, just kind of curious what was going on with those. And the PE on American Woodmark is just 8.9. So you get, even if I had screamed for PE, like say under 10, I would have gotten this company with the same screen. Peg is just 0.98, which is a value peg. That means both value and growth are super strong here. And I took a look at that earnings growth. So 2018 earn, earnings growth expected to be up 45%. <laughs> so I look at that. I look at the shares down 48% and I'm like, what am I missing? What is what is going on here? And then 2019, similarly. So it's not just that all the growth is in 2018 and the analysts think, oh, 2019, they're doomed. No, it's still another 13.6% in 2019. So yeah, it's got the good exact rank. Um, it's got the growth because that peg, it has all the value fundamentals are super cheap and the shares are down 48% and it's hitting new lows. I, I did have to say when I was looking at some of these, I am wondering as uh, a person who follows the insiders through my insider trader service here at Zach's, whether or not the insiders are going to be buying some of these, especially this one, uh, after they report earnings, because they're probably on lockdown before they report, they would be because they have insider information that we all don't have. But once they report, usually that window opens and then they can buy in themselves because this seems like a really good story and stock is super cheap. So I'm going to be watching that. But that's American Woodmark A. M W D is the ticker. Okay, and then switching to the next company is called MCOR. E M C O R is how you spell it, and the ticker is E M E. Now they describe themselves as a leader in mechanical and electrical construction, industrial and energy infrastructure, and building services. So they're an engineering and construction firm, and they make critical infrastructure. And that's an interesting area because, again, like American Woodmark, this should be doing pretty well right now because the economy is hot and a lot of building is going on. So took a look at all the numbers here. So this one has a market cap of $4.1 billion, so it's a mid-cap, not, not one of the smalls. And year-to-date, the shares are down 14%, so not quite as bad as American Woodmark, but they're within a dollar of the 52-week low, so they that's how they got into the screen. The price to sales ratio is just 0.5, so that's cheap. Took a look at the PE, it's 14.6, which would put it in the value metrics because it's under 15. Not as cheap as American Woodmark, but still pretty cheap. And then I took a look at the peg, 0.97, so again, a peg under one, which indicates growth and value. So of course, I had to look at the earnings on this one too. Earnings growth for 2018, 17%, 2019, 6.5. One estimate is moving higher in the last 30 days on this company, which is why I get the better Zach's rank for both 2018 and 2019. So at least one analyst out there is bullish ahead of the earnings here. And you get a dividend yield with uh, it yielding 0.5%. So at least you get something there. So yeah, MCOR is another one. You, you really need to be investigating, you might want to check out, the earnings report from this quarter, 
because I'm not sure why this is so weak either, given the value metrics here and the growth outlook. So MCOR EME. And then switching over to one of the home builders. I don't think anyone would be surprised that home builder is on this list, but it is one I haven't talked about in the past really. And it's Toll Brothers. T-O-L is the ticker there. And this is the luxury home builders. I've covered many of the others, Pulte, KB Home, Lennar, a lot of the other ones. But this is the first time I've done toll on the luxury side. Now they have a market cap of $4.7 billion, But take a look at how cheap they are. Okay, so the shares are down 33.4% year to date. They are hitting the new lows. This is one of the ones that had a zero on the metric of how close are they to the 52-week low? And all the home builders have just been in a steady decline. It hasn't even really been sharp over the last like month and a half, two months. It's just been down, 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 down. So this one down 33%. And the price-to-sales ratio is just 0.7. So that's real cheap. It has a PE of only 6.8 now. A lot of these have been cheap for a while. Again, the home builders, we've been talking about it, but... Toll Brothers PE 6.8. The peg is at 0.4 now because <laughs> took a look at those earnings, just like the other two, for fiscal 2018, up 44% the earnings growth. And then fiscal 2019, another 16% expected. Now, the analysts last were updating the earnings about 60 days ago. So there were a couple, four higher less in the last 60 days. I'm assuming that's off an earnings report. And similarly, six have been higher in the last 60 days for fiscal 2019. So the analysts still liking what's going on here with the home builders, but the market does not. The market's fleeing these. So I don't know if this is the bottom yet on some of these, but it's behooving of us to start looking around at some of these home builder names. Um, I'm not sure they're totally hated enough to be dirt, 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 dirt cheap. This is pretty cheap though. This is pretty cheap here, like pretty dirt, but maybe not multiple dirts. But if we start getting down there, the P of like five or something, I mean, you got to be taking a look, right? And you get a dividend yield with this one of 1.4%. So that's not too bad either for some of your pain. But as I said, the shares are still on the decline here, but this is Toll Brothers. T-O-L is the ticker there. And then switching over to, I guess we should call this business services, but it has an IT component too. So it's Synex, S-Y-N-N-E-X is the name. Ticker is S-N-X. I think I've talked about it before in the past because it's still really cheap, but these shares are now down 43% year to date. They've actually already reported and they're still down 43%. They have a price to sales ratio of 0.15. So (laughs) that's like among the cheapest. They're basically giving their sales away here. PE is just 7.4. So that's dirt cheap too. And they describe themselves as a Fortune 200 company, um, a leading business process servicing company. They do iTech and products on a global market, global scale. And they did just have record third quarter performance. Now they have a couple different areas. They have this tech solutions division, and then they have this other one that's called Convergis. And Convergis just combined with Concentric, that's an acquisition that they made that they're expecting to be um, accretive almost right away to that division. And in this last quarter, it was really tech solutions that drove the quarter. That was up 17%, the revenue there year over year. The Convergis was down slightly. So that could be why they're combining with this other company, Concentric, in that division. That acquisition actually just closed on October 5th. So won't really feel it until the next couple quarters. But that's something interesting to watch there. So what are the estimates doing on this one? It obviously has the good Zach's rank of one or two, but we have two higher and one lower in the last 30 days for fiscal 2018, but earnings expected to grow 14% in this this fiscal year and another 14% next fiscal year, fiscal 2019. So we're not seeing the earnings decline there either. Like with any of these, they're not value traps here. And this one, again, dirt cheap. You do get a dividend paying about 1.8% right here with a market cap of $4 billion. So this is a mid-cap. 
and it's trading with just within a few dollars of its all-time lows. I think it got like a little bit of boost off of its earnings and now is still remaining weak here. So this is a real, real interesting one for those of you who like the oversold and the dirt cheap because that price to sales ratio of 0.15 is really juicy. Okay, switching to our fifth company. This one is called TTM Technologies, and the ticker is TTMI. Now, this is a small cap with a market cap of $1.5 billion, but they describe themselves as a leading global printed circuit board manufacturer. And then TTM stands for time to market. So they incorporated some of their philosophy and the, the um, purpose of the company into the name, but I know many of you are like, oh, circuit boards, eh, boring, right? Well, the numbers don't look so boring with this one. Although the shares are down only 8% year to date, and they're a little bit off their 52-week low now, but I would say about 2 to 3% off that low. So still within the parameters of the screen I did, and not down quite as severely, but still really, really cheap. So the price-to-sales ratio with this one is just 0.5. And then it has a PE of 7.7. So that's really cheap, again, under the 10 even. And again, I didn't even screen for PE with these, but this is what I'm getting. So um, what's happening with those estimates, though? So 2018, earnings expected to be up 16.6%. 2019, another healthy 15.7%. There's been no changes on these estimates, though, over the last 90 days. And there are three estimates. We have Zach's has three estimates on the company. So that's better than just having a small cap with like one estimate. So there are three and they haven't reported earnings yet reporting on October 30th. So we're still waiting on this one, but that's TTM technologies, which is TTMI. So the interesting thing about these five stocks is that all of them had both the value and the growth components, even though I didn't even screen for that. And obviously all trading within a couple percent or at their 52-week lows. And I was surprised at how cheap all these were, like I said, by the PE. Only one had that PE over 10, and that was MCOR, which is at 14.6, but everybody else was under 10. I didn't even plan for that. And then the Zach's rank, I knew would add in rising earnings estimates. I didn't realize how much growth there would be in those in those earnings, however, and that's why we got the good peg too. So this was like a this is like a powerhouse screen for whatever reason this week. Like I said, I was super excited to see what what came through here and how cheap and and the growth that they have. And that's a rare combination to find both the cheap factor and the growth component without it being a value trap. So that's kind of the key too. You can always find oversold stocks or the cheap stocks. But as we know, because we've been investigating the value traps many times on the show, um, a lot of them tend to be value traps, especially you start getting those single digit PEs, that means, you know, the Wall Street's ignoring it for some kind of reason. Like, why is this so cheap? Well, apparently everybody's abandoned some of these, the home builders and American Woodmark um, in particular, and some of these smaller kind of techie um, tech services type of names are being abandoned too. So that's why we screen. And this is an exciting time, I feel, to be a value investor because we can get into some of these oversold names. But again, I'm not saying that this is the bottom of the selling necessarily, but it's time for value investors to start looking around at what their opportunities are in these sell-offs so that you can take advantage. And for the ones that haven't reported earnings yet, you definitely want to be tuning in to at least see what they do you know, in the press release, if not listen to some of these conference calls. But I've listened to the American Woodmark one in the past. So I might have to tune into that one again this quarter because I really want to know why, why are these shares so cheap for that one? Um, so yeah, so let's recap the stocks again so that you can go investigate them for yourself too and see what's going on. So we have American Woodmark, that's A-M-W-D, M-Core is E-M-E, then we had Toll Brothers, T-O-L, Synex, which is S-N-X, 
and TTM Technologies, which is TTMI. And as always, I love bringing you the value stocks every week, so you don't want to miss a single episode. You can get us as a standalone show on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts, and we're on a joint show with The Market Edge, which you don't want to miss either. So you can get both of those on SoundCloud under Zach's Market Edge. But either way, you don't want to miss a single episode because I'm bringing you these stocks every week. And right now, really interesting conditions in the market, even for us value investors. Everybody's focused on growth and, oh, there's some deals in the growth stocks. Well, we're getting some deals too, deals in the value and the growth. So you want to be sure to tune in every week. And I'll be back again next week with some more value stocks.